Hello and welcome back friends to Top 10 Gaming, I'm your host Johnny Rogers and before we get started make sure to hit that thumbs up button and let us know in the comments which creepypasta top 10 you've enjoyed the most from us. With that let's get to today's list shall we of the top 10 playstation creepypastas. Number 10, your fate is in the cards. This creepypasta is about a valuable lesson a lonely player learned from a used PS2 game. He claims he was a very lonely person until the day he picked up a copy of Persona 3. In the game he meets two strange people. One was a short, white haired man that wore a black suit and had big eyes named Igor. And the other was a slim white haired girl with yellow eyes named Elizabeth. The creepy part was when Elizabeth said, you have been lonely for a while, haven't you? This freaked him out so he decided to save the game and maybe get some sleep. And after spending the day alone again at school, he gets home and decides to play the game again. Except when he starts, he's in a room but he notices his character isn't there. Igor looks at him and says, hello again, did you have a long day at school? He drops the controller and runs to the bathroom to just splash some water in his face, but Igor then said, Do not fear, we are simply here to have a chat with you. Feeling stupid for asking a game, he said, how do you know about me? Igor then held up four blue cards and said, The cards told me. They contain everything there is to know about you. The characters in the game began describing every detail of the player and telling him they, they know why he's lonely and that He's lonely because he decides to be lonely. Even saying your fate is in the cards. Do not try to escape it. Should you choose this path, you will spend your life all alone. Nobody to talk to, nobody to love. You will just stay there and die alone. Number 9, The Hidden Console On his way to a friend's place to play PS4, our protagonist notices a console called the PlayStation Dreamscape and he finds it at a garage sale with the house number being 4114. When he started it up, there was a game already on the console called PlayStation Ad Creator. The logos for PlayStation and one called DF Entertainment appeared on the screen. He found through research that this console was created by Daniel Fletcher, hence DF Entertainment. But Sony ended the partnership suddenly. And the game makes players create ads for PlayStation products, including the Dreamscape. Now, in the game, you could receive phone calls from customers, except our player gets a phone call from a police officer, stating that many of the people who purchased the Dreamscape after seeing his ads he had created in the game have been dying by electrocution. He tries relentlessly to create new ads, but the only one he can create is for the Dreamscape, which constantly follows a creepy messaging that says, you have to lure more of them. Then the Dreamscape began short-circuiting. He manages to drop the control before it actually electrocutes him. But upon further research, he discovered that Sony disbanded from DF Entertainment because of their hidden agenda to kill its players. There supposedly wasn't any of the console still around, and when he searched the house number he found the console at, into a letter number decoder, it became the name Dan, short for, well, you guessed it, Daniel. It looks like even after Sony discontinued the console, Dan didn't stop. Number 8, Sanity for Trade. This is a strange story about a player who picks up a PS3 and last minute decides to buy a used copy of Borderlands. Throughout playing the game, he would see weird flashes across the screen, and the enemies in the game acted very odd, and some of them would actually be in place of NPCs. One of the cycles that our player comes across offers him to trade his his pistol for a seemingly more powerful gun. When they make the trade, the NPC then shoots himself with the pistol. This startles the player, but he presses on. He continues to see flashes across the screen, but now it's doing something to him. He noticed that when he killed one of the bosses known as Ninetoes, he was laughing as he died, which oddly made the player start laughing. He wondered why he could be so cruel. He then ventured back to TK to turn in the quest when his finger slipped during the cutscene, hitting the R1 button and killing TK. You aren't supposed to be to kill NPCs, so this freaked him out even more. Finally, a message appeared that said, that was funny, didn't it feel nice to know he's okay? The player immediately dropped his controller and turned off the console. Number seven, red screen of death. This story involves a hacked PS2 and the subsequent red screen of death that would display anytime someone tried playing a pirated game. However, this red screen of death was a chainmail curse for the time. And our protagonist is invited over to his friend's place to play PS2 when he shows him the red screen of death. And the screen appears to be a red vortex with a timer stopped and sounds of wind looping in the 
the background. Weirded out by his friend's behavior of just staring at the screen, he heads home. That's when he gets a phone call from his friend, except on the other end, he can only hear the wind and his friend say, I'm sorry, it said if I don't show someone, I'll die. Assuming it was just a practical joke, he hangs up the phone on his friend and starts up his own PS2 to play some games. That's when the red screen appears on his own television. Terrified by this, he buries his console and assumes that if it was a curse passed to him, the console couldn't get to him if it was, well, in the ground. And the following day in class, he learns that the friend who showed him the red screen had fallen down a flight of stairs and now remains in a coma on life support. He then comes to the realization that the curse must have fallen back to the previous victim if someone then avoids it. Number six, Ghost Gamer. This appears to be a haunted console that a deceased grandmother was using in a way to reach out to her loved ones. When the protagonist discovered that his grandmother had been killed, he was helping his dad move boxes out of the house when he found an old PS2 in a box. He decided to play Dragon Ball Z, except it was different. The characters would make strange moaning noises, and even Goku would moan, help, he's shooting me. The following day, he woke up to his console being on, and the game was set to Goku versus Gohan his son. Gohan would moan again, please don't shoot her. Terrified that someone was messing with him, he set up cameras to record the area around the console and to his surprise, he saw a ghost that resembled his grandmother turning on the console. And at number five, Revolt. This creepypasta involves a player speaking of a virus that had been found in his internet, oddly into his rarely used PS3. He was a PC gamer and rarely used his PS3, but one day when Steam wasn't working, he decided to load up the game Portal to play while he waited, and he constantly says that his technology was possessed by some evil spirit. It, it knew who he was, where he lived, and several eerie messages appeared on the PS3 saying, independence seeds revolt. When he tried searching for a virus on his computer, the blue screen of death appeared and then shifted quickly to his PS3, displaying on his TV. Out of fear, he destroys his graphics card on the computer and decides to return the PS3. After reading this creepypasta, we could only assume that independence Seeds Revolt may have been a message to the protagonist from his haunted PS3. He should have destroyed that as well because on his way to returning the console, his brakes suddenly failed and then he was ran off the road by a truck, all because he strived to be independent from his former consoles. Number four, Crimson Butterfly. This story is about three kids who pick up a copy of Fatal Frame 2 Crimson Butterfly, except this copy was creepier than usual. The game began glitching, causing the screen to go black and suddenly a ghostly face appeared appeared on the screen. It was a woman with a sunken face and jet black eyes. Now, in a panic mode, they shut off the console and decided to play something a little more lighthearted. They played Sims for a bit until the screen began glitching again and then the face returned to the screen, opening its mouth. Two of the kids refused to sleep in the same room as the game after that, except for their friend Sarah. The next day, when they woke up, Sarah wasn't anywhere to be found. Parents reported her missing to the police, which left the kids wondering if the game had something to do with this. Upon researching what happened, they discovered that the hack game had deleted all of their saves on the PS2 and replaced them with a 3D jet black box where the previous games were. When they took out the disc, Sarah's name was scratched into the back of it. It's as if the game had abducted Sarah. I mean, I guess they should have paid attention to the warning label. Number three, The Gray Man. This is a story of a gamer who was live streaming a pretty obscure game called LSD Dream Emulator. It featured an NPC known as The Gray Man that would suddenly slide towards your player, then the screen would flash and he would disappear. He stopped playing when the man would appear in his dreams, standing over him as he was drowning in a bathtub. These dreams drove him insane because they felt as though they had lasted for weeks on end. He went insane and would be seen around the city painting Japanese letters on walls in blood red paint. And after the police discovered his body in a forest where he was found bludgeoned to death, they translated the messages he was painting. It translates to Violence District, which was a location in the game he was playing that featured a dark city street with corpses lying on the ground. Perhaps they were victims of the gray man, purposefully set to warn others. Number two, hiding in the dark. Our protagonist had a friend over playing an old 007 game for the PS2 when things went from fun to terrifying very fast. Everything was normal and the two were playing multiplayer when the screen flashed causing the protagonist to drop his controller. Upon picking it up, he found a silver lighter similar to the one in 007 License to Kill. The game continued normally, but because his parents wanted to sleep, they shut off the lights in the basement and that was where the boys were playing. Maybe it was their minds playing tricks on them or maybe it was something more sinister, but they began to see a figure of a man standing in the corner, moving towards them slowly. With not enough time to run for the lights, our protagonist uses the lighter to display what they were seeing and 
and it was a beast from your nightmares. With yellow teeth and a long gray tongue, it let out a blood curdling screech. This caused them to drop the lighter, leave the game on, and run out of the house. When they were outside, smoke began coming from the basement windows, and as the family rushed out, the house slowly began burning to the ground. Firefighters say that it was the game that must have been left on that caused a circuit fire, but the boys knew it must have been whatever it was they had seen hiding in the dark. <coughs> Lastly, at number one, Tekken 4 Prototype. This creepypasta is about a bootleg version of Tekken 4 found at a thrift store. The disc appeared to look like a CDR and had the text Tekken 4 version 1.3 test debug disabled written across it. When playing the game, the player selects a player and is greeted with this disturbing text. Nina was hired to kill. She will kill. After defeating a boss in the game, the player begins to hear strange buzzing noises coming from it. Then goes to a cutscene of Nina in the dark room holding a rifle. She points the rifle out the window and shoots a man. Immediately after that, she turns the gun on herself. With no control over this player, the player watches in terror as this dark hidden prototype of Tekken moves on, and the screen flashed rapidly from red to green to blue, and then froze on this image. Suddenly, the PS2 began rejecting the game, chewing it up and destroying the disc. Although. Maybe it was for the best. I mean, hopefully, no one ever has to see that. And that has been the top 10 PlayStation Creepypastas. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all of our newest videos. Click that playlist on the screen for more videos like this one. Make sure to give us a thumbs up button as well if you've enjoyed this. And let me know down in the comments which one freaked you out the most. From Top 10 Gaming, I'm Johnny Rogers. Until next time, take care.